Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we need to send up a solar truss for our station because it doesn't really have good solar panelry and enough electric charge to host our Kerbals for 60 days. Remember we're trying to do this crude duration record of 60 days here and that's worth quite a lot of funds and we could use that those funds. Um, there's also this crew count record of 10. Um, that's not worth so much. But if we could do that, we would need to send a lot more Kerbals to the station in order to do that, but we would also need much more power. Um, to that end, also, it'd be nice to get this human orbital, Kerbal orbital, uh, contract 3 to LEO. Uh, it's not so easy to get 10 Kerbals in orbit if you only are sending two at a time. So that would be nice. Uh, this this uh, contract to send one around the moon would be uh, good, too. But right now we've reached our maximum active contracts because we've got so many of these contracts dealing with other planets. And of course those are very important and very lucrative and we can't dump them or anything. So we really need, well this one we might have to just take a bite the bullet on. At least it doesn't cost too much in terms of reputation but we'll need to figure out how to get 1.7 million funds to take that blow. But uh, this it just takes too much delta v to put it into that particular orbit around Jupiter. But we've got uh, 19 years to figure that out. Maybe we'll get, unlock some technology that'll make that easier. Uh, I finally use Nerva as, as should have been done maybe. Uh, so maybe Nerva would be the thing to use there. But we'll get to that. The thing about Nerva is of course it's liquid hydrogen and that boils off so that's not so easy. Uh, you can't use it to actually make the orbit so that's complicated. Anyway, we'll get to that, but the point is that we've reached our maximum, and because of the way missions take so long to other planets in real solar system, we really need to unlock the ability to take more contracts. And so, it is time to do this upgrade. But, of course, doing that upgrade not only takes a lot of funds, come on, uh, it also takes time. So, oh no, I didn't. Uh, 44. Okay. 44 days. Not too bad. I was expecting it to take a lot longer. Um, so yeah, we've got that in 44 days and then we could take this particular mission and get three Kerbals up there. We've already got the Orpheus spacecraft and we're building one of those. That's going to be on a Nico 604. It was originally on a 606, but I think the reliability of the NK31 engines is good enough to just have four engines on that stage. So We've got that building. I've got Mars class vessel building and we'll take a look at that if we get to it. But we've got a lot to do. We've got the solar truss and I'll talk about that. Then we have to manage all of our missions here. The bopper, Phobos, Phobos, um, Jupiter orbiter in 66 days. All of those uh, look to be maneuvers that we need to adjust. Some of them might be just mid-course adjustments. Others might be entering the SOI and just a sort of temporary thing. As far as our transfer to, well, our Voyager type missions, that, that's a little ways away still. We're four years, a minimum four years away from the Voyager transfer window. So keep that in mind. But anyway, let's take a look at our solar truss in the VAB. All right, so here's our first solar truss. I call it Solar Truss Multipass A because that's the first thing that came to mind. And... Well, the thing is, we're using Infernal Robotics parts for the first time, so they're going to extend like this. It's the only practical way to get a whole lot of solar panels onto into a fairly small-sized fairing and still be able to extend them properly. And uh, we've got 16 of these um, solar panel array Mark 1s, and they each produce 1 kilowatt, so that's 16 kilowatts worth. So that's pretty good. The station right now has one set of four of these, on one end and then it has a lesser set that's only producing one kilowatt total on the other end so there's a significant increase in the capacity I would have liked to be able to put a rotatotron uh, one of these rotatrons uh, so that we could rotate them then potentially we could have another segment like this down here and then we could rotate them so that they could uh, all work at the same time uh, it, there's also a matter of how wide the station is, of course, these could bump into the station, but uh, I was a little bit worried about using the Rototron even though I unlocked it because it doesn't really have a node on both sides, so I was sort of placing these uh, using surface attach, 
and I was worried about the balance of that. But also, just Infernal Robotics parts in general, I tend to worry about using too many of them. So we'll start off with this. I've added lights so that we have some lighting for our station. And you can see, I've set it to blue, so you can sort of see a blue hue on this part. They're not very strong though, so there's a downside to that. But there we have that. We've got uh, commutrons on this. We've got RCS. We've got uh, KI KIS container with uh, four drills, two battery packs, and some extra solar panels just in case. Possibly what I should do is add some, uh, well, I've already got this building, but later on we could add some antennae or something in there uh, just in case we need to slap some on to something else. But we're already building this, so no need for that. We're using the Lunar Gemini Lander engines down here because they're small. We could have used one kilonewton thrusters, but that would just make the bain uh, burns more painful. Internally, this has uh, 1,360 meters per second. And that's only because we've set utilization here at 27. We could easily have put much more uh, Delta V in here, lots more. But then we would be overburdening the rocket. And the rocket we're using here is just a Nico 210 with uh, six boosters. So 210-6. And again, that's uh, one of the NK-43s here. And then uh, two of the NK-33s at the bottom, and then six Caster-1 boosters. So that's the layout of this. And the, the launcher should be able to get the payload to orbit, but just in case, the payload does have uh, a reasonable amount of Delta-V to finish off orbit just in case it falls a little bit short. But our high thrust weight ratio initially should help things out. Fairly cheap rocket, by the way, of course, because only three engines and then the boosters. So out of the 31,000 you see there, um, the rocket's only about 7,000, and that's 24,000 for the, for the payload itself. Okay, so I think that says it all. We've got plenty of uh, electric charge. We've got uh, four of these 24,000 electric charge power packs. Uh, these are emergency solar panels, uh, just so that we get charge even if the other solar panels aren't aligned properly. And yeah. So we'll be uh, we are we are building this, and we'll have it ready. Another thing being built is the Orpheus on the Nico 604. So this is configured for Earth orbit with plenty of redundancy. In fact, the first stage in uh, first stage, even if it loses an engine, would still be able to go up and control itself. It's got six engines at the bottom. This stage, not so much. Uh, it's got four engines and um, pretty high thrust to weight ratio at the end. Uh, these do not throttle. Uh, I chose the gimbling version over the throttling version. But on the bright side, we probably shouldn't need to use all of the fuel on that stage. It's overfueled just in case for emergencies. And so in that case, we'll shut down well before we reach the top thrust to weight ratio. Um, so And these down here do throttle, so we're not going to get to the 5.74 thrust to weight ratio there. Uh, the payload uh, is underfueled because this spacecraft, the Orpheus spacecraft, is designed to have much more um, delta V. If we could get that all fueled up, uh, you can see 3,140, uh, 3,114, and so very good there. I've replaced the solar panels that are originally on the Orpheus vehicle with the new ones which produce one kilowatt a piece, so that should save us from having to use the fuel cells at all. It has 30 days worth of food, water, and oxygen built in, and of course a crew of three, so that once we upgrade the, the mission control building, we'll be able to take that contract for three crew count and use this to fulfill that contract without having to fuel, of course, this section because it's just a low Earth orbit contract. Um, that fuel is necessary for... Uh, but, but it's sort of my Orion, really, right? I mean, of course, it's a three-person craft only. It's the Apollo command module. But functionally, it's sort of like Orion. And that leads us to the Mars vehicle that I've designed. But we won't, uh, we won't get to that right now because it'll take a while to build and it definitely won't be in this episode. So I'll cover that in another episode. Let's just get on with our missions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our Solar Trust launch is all ready and lined up with the station. We have throttle up, SAS is on, 
And I'm uh, doing this manually because I mean, the KOS script isn't optimized. There was a good uh, KOS script from a viewer, uh, Nadav, who uh, had a fairly workable KOS script, but I'm trying to do a rendezvous and I'm not entirely sure it's uh, suited for that. We'll have to see. I'll test it further. Anyway, so here we go. Everything seems good and ignition. Nice and energetic here. Okay, off they go. They are off cleanly. Very important. Obviously this rocket doesn't have much redundancy. We'll have to be careful. Okay, stage set. And ignition. Oh no! Don't flip! Don't flip! Oh no! Oh fudge. I didn't think we were in the flip regime. Um... It's still good, really, please. Go f go forward, though. Man. Why couldn't you just done that in the first place, Smarty SS? Anyway, uh, we can't let go of the fairings just yet. Let's get our target back. Ah, rare flipping uh, realism overhaul. Well, it looks like we still have enough Delta V as long as Rendezvous itself doesn't take too much. But it might be reading wrong because we haven't released the fairing yet. Okay, let's try and dump the fairing early on the hope that it saves Delta V. Ooh, real close, but alright. Well, we won't make orbit on this stage, but like I said before, at least we have some Delta V in the payload in order to finish orbit. Looks like we'll be maybe 300 meters per second shy or something like that. At least our inclination's not bad. Yeah, we're gonna need to do some work to finish orbit. More than I thought. But okay. Separation. We'll coast to Apoapsis and then make orbit. Um, our Apoapsis might be a little bit low, but and we need to let the station catch up to us. Let me boost my Apoapsis a little bit. Now the station is at 462 kilometers, so if we have a higher Apoapsis, that'll help. We that'll give us a point of tangency. We can uh, keep the other end of our orbit lower. Why does it always have trouble going from map mode to regular mode? Jeez. Okay, we need RCS on. Orbit prograde. Now well, we don't want to overdo things. Let's coast for a little while. Electric charge is diminishing because I haven't extended the solar panels, but that's why I packed so much electric charge in the first place. I don't want to uh, extend the whole solar panel array assembly just yet. So we'll have to temporarily boost to a higher orbit than the station. I've been here before. We're not that far away, we're here. The station's there. That's pretty close to getting us a rendezvous in two orbits. If you take a look, close approach distance, 360, that's half of the distance to target. So then the next orbit, presumably, will close the other half. That's my guess. So let's do that. But monitor the electric charge carefully. Well, this says 36 kilometers now. Let's get to periapsis and see how to adjust that to bring that closer 
looks like a minimum of 25 kilometers there. We'll get to the other end of our orbit and figure out the rest. Looks like electric charge is holding out for uh, this two-orbit rendezvous, so that's fine. Hmm, 21. Well, it looks like there's sort of an oblique location that we're meeting it up at, meeting up with it at. It's not really showing me where our encounter is, though, on here. Well, I think 21 is fine for now. We'll get closer, we just have to be patient. Not much relative velocity to the target. Yeah, not much at all. Look at that. 23 meters per second only. And we've got some good powerful RCS on this thing. We'll have to remember to have the Kerbals pull off the RCS ports that we don't need. That'll be helpful. Stow them away in the KIS container or something. Or uh, we do technically have Coloniza USI colonization stuff going on in here, so maybe they could turn them in ma into material kits to build other things. Haven't really explored that yet. Okay, we are in render range of Spaceport 2, and for some reason I got a KOS beep. Uh, I don't know why. It does that every time I turn to the Spaceport. On the bright side, we're docking this in line with the station, not on the side, so it's a little bit less cumbersome. We may choose to move it later, depending on the future arrangement of the station, much as they did with the ISS. It's possible that we could uh, accommodate two of these alongside the space station instead of in line. That would solve the problem uh, that we had with uh, not having the rotatrons. Okay, we're getting close enough that we need to figure things out now. Uh, two meters per second on approach, a minute and a half out, let's slow down. 200 meters away. And it's sort of tilted, I'm not going to move it. I'll try, try and get some practice in. I'll decide to go with this port. Don't know if that's the best place, but it probably doesn't matter one end or the other. Okay, we are continuing to line up here. Everything is looking good. Now 54 meters from the target. Plenty of fuel, plenty of electric charge. Okay, uh, seeming a little bit off here. Hopefully Mechjeb is lying about the closest approach distance. Because we are closer than that already, so... It's gotta be some kind of weird situation. We have contact and connection. It's a pretty big module actually, this solo array truss. Uh, let's extend the arms. Okay, very good. And extend the solar panels. Who cannot deploy while stowed. Oh, okay, one of them seems to be able to deploy while stowed. Hmm, extend. Looks like the action group's just not going to work, but we can extend the panels. Well, okay, we can extend some of the panels, not all the panels. I might need to go back to the Space Center and come back to this in order to actually get everything else to extend. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now we've got it. Now they're out. Let's uh, retract these. I don't think they're... they're sort of redundant right now. They just complicate matters.
So now later on, if we really want to, we could move this module over to one of these ports. Uh, it'll be a tight fit if we still want to dock craft on these, but we could have a separate docking module on one of the ends, and then that'll be fine. Oop, a little bit sticky here. Well, it's a lot of parts now. How many parts is this? It's a good question. With two spacecraft docked, we had 271 parts. Okay, but we have to check about the whole power situation and whether we can turn off the fuel cells. If we can't turn off the fuel cells, it's sort of not going to work out. And I'm going to try it without any of these extra solar panels out. Okay, that fuel cell is deactivated. And that one's deactivated. All right, no active fuel cells. Let's see, so it's at 16... Okay, 1.6 million electric charge right now, and draining. Let's see what happens on a full orbit. I haven't oriented the space station to get maximal sun exposure. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a net increase now, so it won't be reliant on its fuel cells anymore. Very good. Complete success. And this is with four Kerbals on board. Let's see what its orientation is. It's not horrible as far as its orientation to the sun. It's just a little bit tilted. Um, we could do a little bit better. Uh, there's a lot of RCS going on on this thing though. Hmm. Yeah, let's just leave it be. Uh, I I'm worried about what RCS will fire when they'll probably all fire, but that's our station now. It's looking well. It's looking like a interesting thing that isn't like another station. Yep. So that's a good start. And how about Fubar and Oxygen? How's that going? One year, more than one year, and uh, it started to count the sixty days. But we've got other business to attend to. Yeah, at least they've got the power, but we're probably going to divert ourselves to, let's see, we've got to take care of the bopper and all these other missions, and then we'll have some time to see about the 60 days. We'll also have mission control complete. Okay, so uh, doing some maneuvers with our interplanetary vessels. Well, guess what? We finished upgrading Mission Control and they took away that uh, three Kerbal in orbit contract. Just the one I wanted to. Well, that's not so helpful. And, well, they took away the lunar orbit contract as well as just uh, a moon landing contract. We could get successful re-entry, but that's uncrewed. Hmm. Well, that's not great, but let's just proceed with the stuff that we've got going then. So here we are with the bopper, and it is entering Mars SOI now, and we need to make sure it gets into a nice polar orbit because it's got two parts to it. It's got a section that's supposed to do an altimetry scan, so we've got the altimetry sensor there, and we need to get a low resolution altimetry scan of Mars of 95%, so of course we have to get into polar orbit for that. But we've also got a little Mars lander here, and its controller is upside down, unfortunately. It's got parachutes and many instruments, and so science data from the surface of Mars is what we're looking for there. And currently its fuel is locked, so that's good. But we're relying on this heat shield to uh, help us get into orbit around Mars. It has some, oh, I, I probably dumped half of its ablator, that's fair enough. But we need to get a good altitude for that. Now we've got 1,000 meters per second extra just in case we don't hit the best altitude, but we certainly don't want to get too low. And right now we are too low. So let's, um, let's adjust this a bit. And we do have RCS um, the other way. Doop, doop. Let's try 55 for now. I think that would be a good idea. Now we hit our periapsis in one day and 17 hours. 
get rid of this alarm. And so we'll be uh, we'll be captured or not captured before the Phobo Centaur mission. It doesn't look quite polar, does it? I mean, it's good, but well, no. It says inclination. Hold on, Kerbal is being paused. Okay, it says uh, 91 degrees, but does that include the like 23 degrees that everything is sort of inclined? Because if so, we might it might be an issue. Hmm. I mean, it does look like it could do better, right? I don't know. I mean, I think we'll get more than 95% anyway. And hopefully any adjustment we make won't cost too much. Okay, let me F5 here. Because of the hit or miss nature of air braking around Mars. And I don't want to have to do this all over again. This is partly a test for the next two missions after all. Okay, let's get closer. I have to remember six minute uh, signal delay. So that's gonna be fun. But we don't have to obey that much because most of the control will be with smart ASS. So I'll tell you ahead of time we're going to be oriented retrograde and we need to pull in the solar panels obviously. So there's that. Up oh, there it is, Mars. We don't have that much electric charge, come to think of it. Uh-oh, wait a minute. It only says 1300 electric charge, but that's only what we have in this core. Does this lander not have any electric... Ah! Oh, somehow I accidentally dumped the electric charge in the lander? Ah, uh, well that's not going to be any good, is it? We may have to land this whole thing after scanning for the stuff. Otherwise we don't have any power. I don't know if the parachutes can handle that. But it looks like that's our only option. Well, one thing at a time. Let's get into orbit and try and do the altimetry scan part first. Um, science data from the surface of Mars, we don't have much time to do, we have to do it, we have to do it. So we'll have to try it with this. We'll probably lose these communitrons if we keep them out. So let's just pull them in. Well, no, we've got backup communitrons actually, that's fine. We'll leave these out, just in case they survive, could help. Okay, solar panels getting pulled in. Good times. Okay, let's get set up for entry. That looks like a pull to me. Probably means we're all right. The atmosphere is a little bit weird though. I'm not feeling like we are slowing down enough. We probably should have gone lower. Already going up. Heating was not bad at all, by the way. I don't think we lost any ablator. Still got communication, so that's good. And the uh, little antennae didn't snap off. It's uh, it is a relay through another satellite. Figures. That's good. We'll always like to see everybody helping out. Okay, we have capture. Let's bring it down to a decent altitude with a shorter orbital period, otherwise it'll take forever to scan this thing. We are too high though. 
So we're only going to be getting altimetry data on part of our orbit. If we want to, we can reduce our orbit, but uh, that could potentially risk the entire probe or risk our ability to land the probe later. All right, well, I derped. I forgot to extend the solar panels and it lost electric charge. But worry not, um, we are just going to quick load. Cannot quick load in this scenario. I'll figure out a way to quick load and that'll allow us to uh, test a different periapsis for capture. This is, like I said, sort of a test and we know that 54 kilometers is too high. I think we'll go for 50 next time. So let's see how that works. Sorry about this, but um, it is necessary and useful. Okay, here we go, 50 kilometer approach. And let's see how it works. Okay, let's start doing the things. Retract panel, retract panel. Wait, six minutes obviously, but uh, we'll also program it. So, surface negative velocity. Um, we're controlling from the wrong thing, aren't we? We should be controlling from this thing. Well, looking at the textures, that's definitely the pole right there. Yep, I mean, look how the textures all sort of lead into that. Interesting. There's a tiny bit of ablation. Oh, we actually have heat effects. All right, let's come out of physical time warp for safety's sake. Hopefully this means we won't have to use any fuel for capture. Oh, it's really ablating, yep. It's not really slowing down though, honestly. This seems odd to me. Seems like something's wrong. Maybe loading the quick save was not a thing I should have done. Because our orbit's not changing. That's very weird. I mean, at the very least, our orbit should have been changing. I think I've hit a glitch. I had to restart the game between the... Uh, on the reload. I wonder... Because, you remember, I added some mods in to this particular install. I wonder if so one of them is messing around. Okay, let's try this again. I think I know which mod is the problem, but... Unfortunately, getting rid of it caused the problem, and I wanted to get rid of it because it was spamming the output log in a weird way and potentially causing a crash, but it's no guarantee. We'll have to see whether this can actually slow down in the atmosphere. If it doesn't, then we've got bigger problems. Yep. So I put the mod back in, and until I determine the exact thing, I'm not going to mention which mod it is, because I don't want people to, like, go crazy about it. Okay, now the other one's retracting. Good. Good timing. Right before we hit the atmosphere again. Now I have to hope that uh, whatever issue occurred has been corrected. Could have been just an issue with the quick saving. Might not have quick saved the aerodynamic data correctly somehow? I don't know. Okay, well now we're slowing down, so that's good. That's what should happen. We're not supposed to constantly accelerate into the atmosphere, and it looks like our orbit is changing, as would be expected. So, good times. Alright, well, problem solved for now. And I'll do more work on trying to figure out what went wrong there and hopefully try and fix it.
Now I just have to remember to extend the solar panels after we pass through the atmosphere and hope that at 50 kilometers we'll stay in orbit and not have to land. No indications of deadly heat this time. Uh, no ablation, really. So, boy, whatever happened last time uh, definitely was weird. There's some heat effects now, but still not much by way of ablation. I mean, we're not coming in at anything like the velocities we come in at Earth. And, of course, um, the atmosphere is much thinner. So, the fact that we are not experiencing much ablation is not a surprise. I think it's time for me to start helping things along, perhaps. I'll give the signal to extend the altimetry scanner now, since it'll take six minutes to extend it. Same with the solar panels. Just using some fuel to shorten the orbital period. We can try and get it to 12 hours. I think would be a good deal. I don't know if we want to get into a safe orbit or whether we want to skim the atmosphere again to lower our apoapsis. I think maybe just a light skim. Keep it to a hundred kilometers, which is very, very mild. And I'm gonna hope that we can even keep our solar panels out at that uh, height. And let's see what a hundred kilometers does for our orbital period. We can see the orbital period going down, but part of that might be just the RCS. This is an experiment. Once in orbit around Mars, can we uh, drop our orbit uh, using a periapsis of 100 kilometers without retracting the instruments? I'm gonna put caps lock on. I really don't want the R I don't think it's gonna help though. I really don't want the RCS to be firing constantly. If I try and engage SAS, it's gonna take uh, 6 minutes and 17 seconds, so that's not gonna work. As far as our scanning is concerned, we should be close enough to do some scanning. It looks like we've done 5% of uh, required 95% already. So that's pretty good. In fact, uh, at that rate, we might be done by the time the Phobos missions come in. We're coming to the minimum altitude and it doesn't seem to be doing any harm to our instruments at this altitude. Probably that means I don't even need to hold orientation. ScanSat is uh, ideal up to about 500 kilometers, it looks like. And it's too high. I'm going to go around one more time. No adjustments. We have now encountered the atmosphere again. This time I'm not maintaining any particular orientation. And we're at 8% on the altimetry scan. Probably before I bring the Phobos missions in, I'll try and get to the bottom of uh, what's going on here. I think we've done some good science and research here. We know something about Mars now that we did not before. Namely that once we capture, we uh, it's pretty easy to uh, aim at 100 kilometers for the periapsis and bring an orbit down like this. Even with all sorts of stuff sticking out that's very sensitive and 10 eyes seem to be alright. This pass won't bring our orbit orbital period down that much though. did a bit but not as much as the first pass did so diminishing returns it's funny it only shows four contracts here what happened to the other ones pretty sure we have three more where that came from 
It only shows four contracts here. Uh-oh. We may need to review the situation here. More might have gotten busted than I thought. Yeah, all right. Uh, let me hold off on this. This isn't exactly in the most stable situation, but we'll make sure to come back to it. Let's go back to the Space Center and see about those contracts. Okay, yeah, it only has four active contracts now. We definitely have more than that. It doesn't have anything under all completed, failed, or canceled. So some data was lost in creating the quick save, and that's causing a problem. I think I need to stop right now and reassess the situation, see what's missing, and see if we can salvage this or if we have to repeat stuff. I won't repeat stuff uh, in the in an episode. I'll try and handle it off camera and get it into the same state as we are leaving it right now. But I'll note any discrepancies if any should occur. But before we do anything else with our Mars missions, let me get this all sorted out. All right, so on that uh, dubious note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.